Don't worry about it. It's just locker room time. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentle dems, to episode six of Locker Room Talk. We are now more than halfway through season one. I am so happy to be here. My name is Gamerdoc and joined as usual by my lovely co-host, Eleni Tabesta has. Uh, Eleni, so we finally have an opening weekend for the NWHL a month later than it normally is. November 6th is when the action is going to kick off. Schedule got released if you haven't seen it. What game are you most excited about? Or games, anything. I mean, I'm excited for all of them. Um, I love all my children equally. However, because I live in Boston, Go I, have not been in, I have not been in Warrior Ice Arena. I have not been in Warrior Ice Arena since, um, well, I guess we filmed something, but I haven't been there for a game for probably since the All-Star game in 2020. Uh, wow. I am so ready to be back at Warrior. I am so ready to watch Pride Whitecaps. I am so ready to order one of those terrible grilled cheeses from the uh, the concession stand and scarf it down standing on the ice level trying to get a good shot of hopefully someone not taking a penalty. But who Very say? specific memories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Very specific. So you're excited for the Whitecaps doubleheader. Against the yes, pride. I think that'll be fun. I think um, the Minnesota Boston games are always really fun. I think the rematch of the Cup final is always like oh yeah, like, in, in any sport, like when you have the two teams that met in the championship mm -hmm. and then start their seasons against each other, it's just electric. It's a lot of fun. Electric. It's Alexis. It's a lot of fun. It's Alexis, a little... Steven. Uh, 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 we both sit at the same time. It's like we finish each other's sandwiches. Yeah, so I, I wonder, it looks like they're going to kind of continue with that two-game format that we're used to with the Whitecaps. Interesting enough, though, they're not doing that with Toronto. So Toronto is only playing one game against the Buttes for that opening weekend. So I guess Whitecaps are getting two games. Toronto, maybe it's just going to be one game. I, I'm, I'd be interested to see how they're going to work that schedule. We'll have to see. Work that schedule. Really well, it's got probably something to do with customs or something. That something to do with something like that. Uh, speaking of schedule, we have a schedule for Worlds, maybe? In like three weeks? Seems a little yeah. last minute, but what do you what, what do you think? It's, yeah, sure. Yeah, it sure does seem to be happening at the end of the month. Uh, I don't want to get my hopes up because I've just been crushed so mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the players feel similarly, but mm -hmm. I it'll be around my birthday, hopefully... Team USA will not disappoint me on my birthday. Sunday, um, August 22nd, is that your birthday? Actually, my birthday's on the 21st. Oh, well, USA's not playing that day, so they probably yeah. won't disappoint you. Well, you never know. <laughs> the internet is a scary place, <laughs> as we know. Anywho, yeah, there's a schedule. It's gonna be exciting. I'm pumped to see. It's gonna be weird, because it's been a pandemic year, and like all sorts of shenanigans have happened in terms of who's been able to play and who's not been able to play. and and. So uh, literally anything could happen. I can't wait. Anything goes, anything could happen. Kind of like this off season of the NWHL. If you're like me and you don't pay attention unless Lenny tells you about stuff, then there have been some shakeups. So prior to this, we had some teams being owned by the NWHL and some teams being owned by private owners. As of now, every single team is privately owned. Eleni, for those of us at home who didn't know anything about that until a couple weeks ago, what the crap does that mean? Um, so the teams before before now, there were a couple teams that were owned by women's hockey partners, which is a which was a corporation and no longer exists to my knowledge, but it was a corporation that was basically like the league owning team. So that's not like WAGs? It's not like with the, the, the partners of the women's hockey players? No, it's way less cool than that. Oh, before. okay. Well, it's underwhelming. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. But basically what they did was instead of having the, the league own the teams, they sold the teams to individual investors in the league. And what that does, there's a lot of things that it does. And I don't want to get into like the legal technicalities because it doesn't really Because you are a lawyer and we will get bored. Uh, or confused, which is worse. Um, 
but but one of the major things is that now the people who own the teams individually can kind of allocate whatever money they want to whatever they want um, without oh. having to worry so much about like, well, we're the league, so we can't show favoritism to X team or we're the league, so we don't have very much money to spend on this because we're spending all this money on league things. We can't focus on spending money on team things. Hmm. So these individual investors who already were giving money to the league now can give money directly to teams for things like themed compression socks Ooh, party. into that into a pizza Rick party in the shape of mascots all sorts of those are completely not things that they're those doing. should be things that happen wait I mean, so you're telling me that women's hockey partners is open now it's dissolved so i could take over it's like a grown-up word for puck bunny you know women's hockey partners i'm sorry i'll leave this train of thought but i just my brain is I'm stuck there my brain is uh, stuck st st there. anymore. Hmm. So the people who were working for it no longer work for hmm. it. So my only question about this is it's kind of like the debate between centralized and state government. When you give more control to the states, you're going to have bigger differences in laws and rules and regulations. So with this decentralization in power in the NWHL, are we more concerned about equality about differences about enforcement you know like i don't think what what happened with the toronto six social media account earlier this year you know would have necessarily happened if it was run by the league but yeah, there's there's pluses and minuses to anything I mm -hmm. think. And, and that's definitely something where it can be frustrating for the league mm -hmm. and frustrating for fans to be in a position where like there's pretty much nothing the league can do about that, reasonably speaking. Like, sure, if they really wanted to be crazy about it, they could, like, fine Toronto for having people involved yeah. that they didn't agree with. But, like, that's you're never going to do that for yeah. a lot of reasons. Well, that's um, what happened when I, you know, I didn't always work locker room talk when I was on open ice and the whole stuff about, Digit came out. I emailed the league and I was like, hey, y'all, like, I, what are we going to do about this? Like, I'm not about to do this award show if we haven't addressed it, blah, 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 blah. And I, the email I got back was, they're privately owned. What are we going to do? I think to some extent that's a cop out, but to some extent it genuinely isn't. And I think um, for legal reasons and also just like in general management reasons, it becomes really difficult to homogenize and to enforce like especially if it's like an unwritten rule like mm -hmm. it was i'm fairly sure it was an unwritten rule like oh we're not going to be transphobic <laughs> but they didn't write it down anywhere we should all write that down everyone go write that down i'm gonna write it down right Get now <laughs> go ahead i'll wait just one second No transphobes. Oh, that's my to-do list. Don't look at that. No transphobes. None. Okay. So, I, I mean, to the extent that you don't have things, like, codified, it's very difficult to uh, enforce. But also, I think there's a lot of things about it that are really, really good. And I do think generally those things outweigh the potential negatives. Um, one thing that I, I like to t uh, bring up when I'm trying to explain why private ownership is important uh, in the CWHL, all of the teams were owned by the league. Um, and so you had like Montreal, which was a powerhouse and everyone wanted to play there and they got all sorts of cool stuff. And then you had the Boston slash Worcester Blades who didn't get anything pretty much. And like, because they were owned by the same, en same entity, there was no reason for the league to like care that yeah. one of the teams sucked or like was having a bad time. But if you have individual ownership and you're the guy that owns the guy that owns the whale now, you're like, I want my team to be the best team. Yeah. I want my team to beat the crap out of that team. How can I make that happen? And the answer is you're going to pump money into this team. You're going to make sure your your athletes are the buffest, the smartest, the best harder, athletes. better, faster, like, stronger. And you can do that now without someone being like, well, but what about Buffalo? Like, I don't own Buffalo. I don't care. You know, like I, I think that it, it creates more incentive for there to be parity mm -hmm. in the way that athletes are treated, which then hopefully creates parity in the yeah. level of play. Uh, uh, Whale, if you are listening, please upgrade your streaming cameras.
please. I love you so much. The white balance needs help. Yeah. I need, I just, I, we need better cameras. We do. We do. For whale watching. For whale watching. Impressive. Thank you. Is that a, is that a humpback? Uh, beluga. Beluga. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I got that one. Speak Way beluga wrong. and killer. Okay. We've got some mixed dialects. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, back so to I think it's a great thing. I'm whale excited. watching. I'm excited for the whale. I'm excited for all of us. I think it's going to be grand. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit later about um, some more granular details. Ooh, I'm excited. So speaking of um, ownership and funding and equity, just like teams need to, you know, pay their players and pay their staff here at Locker Room Talk, we also operate on a very robust fiscal budget. Um, and so as a result, we do have sponsors. Um, and so we're trying out this new thing where we're gonna try and generate some revenue internally. Um, so please, you know, stay tuned for this upcoming commercial. Um, and if you like the product, go ahead and, and buy it. You know, that's how you can directly support us. Yeah, we are taking orders starting now. We so. will be taking orders, yes. Michelle is standing by. Um, so here you go. Here is your first Locker Room Talk product. <laughs> Attention all hockey super fans. Have you collected your favorite player's jersey, jersey, helmet, bobblehead, and everything else in the shop? I guess? Well, we've got the product for you. Introducing Hockey Bathwater. What? Yep, you heard correctly. For the low cost of $69.99, you can take home your very own jar of freshly boiled hockey year juice. Each bottle has been stewed, lightly strained, and then is delivered to your door the very next day. Kind of this. Call now and get your hockey bath water today while supplies last. <coughs> Great. I can't decide if we just went too far or if we haven't gone far enough. And I think the only way to answer the question is to see how much interest there actually is. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, have you gotten any calls yet? My phone's ringing off the hook. Off the hook. That's our producer, Michelle J. Behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. Phone is ringing off the hook for hockey bathwater. Uh, thank you for your support. We couldn't do this without you. Um, so speaking of support, though, what is more supportive than a strong blue liner? Today's guest, ladies and gentle friends, is none other than Kaylee Fracken. She has the third longest tenure in NWHL history. Her play has earned her three selections to the All-Stars and Defender of the Year in 2020. Please welcome Pride Defender, Kaylee Fracken. Kaylee Fracken, welcome, welcome, welcome to Locker Room Talk. It is a pleasure, a pleasure having you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of excitement. They just released, as we talked in about in our new section, the opening schedule. Um, the, it, these games might look a little bit familiar because for anyone who wasn't paying attention, like 12 years ago, you and the Whitecaps were set to face off for the Isabel Cup. Then something like a global pandemic happened. Then the thing that was like placid happened. And then finally we got to watch the game after like a year and a half. Um, that was a wild ride. So, you know, since then, what are some things that the Pratt are looking to tighten up, you know, before opening weekend in November? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is we're probably going to have um, probably more turnover than we had um, the last couple seasons. So for us, I think the, the biggest thing is getting a lot of those new players on board, um, kind of immersed in the type of culture and just the expectations that we have as a group, because it's, um, it certainly is probably different than, than a lot of the clubs and, um, just kind of the, the environment that we create at the locker room or that we want every day at practice. So I think the biggest thing for us is getting the new players acclimated to that. And then, um, starting fresh with, with a new squad and, um, kind of starting in the steps of what we do at the beginning of every season where, you know, we're building, um, kind of, cause we don't really know what we have. Like we have, you know, maybe a lot more returners on the back end than we do offensively. So, um, starting to piece together um, after we get the off ice component kind of, you know, checked off the list. It's like, now what do we have to do from an on ice perspective to kind of, you know, slowly get to obviously the ultimate goal of, of playing in the Isabel Cup final. Yeah. I, I don't know. 
this might seem controversial to people at home, but I feel like the the pride are kind of like the patriots where there is a system and you come into the system and this is how things work and the culture is set by the veterans and you kind of fall into the system. Um, and because you guys always come out, you know, you have the same locker room vibes and everyone on the, on, you know, on the pride speaks the same about the team. And it seems like the team mentality is so, 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 so very strong. So getting people into that, into that when we're in a pandemic and there's still like lots of stuff going on is probably a lot more difficult than it, than it normally is. Have you guys been able to at least get to practices or do some sort of team stuff yet? Not yet. Um, you know, we have like a couple of, you know, just like informal skill sessions going out throughout the summer, like our assistant coach is running um, some of his own own skills and a couple of the players are going out too. Um, so you're starting to meet some of the, the new people. Um, we won't start kind of that formal uh, team sort of stuff until uh, end of September, beginning of October, just because the season starts, um, like you saw on the schedule, doesn't start till November, um, which is kind of crazy, like a whole nother month of an, of an off season when you practice uh, for a million times this past year, um, which is crazy. But yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that we've tried to do as a, as a leadership group is to really instill this type of, like you're saying, culture and environment, because I've played on a couple of other organizations in the league and um, you have so much turnover year to year, just with the nature of kind of where the league is and um, you know, girls moving on to other things uh, with their professional career outside of hockey. So it's really super important to be successful is creating kind of a structure in place so that when new people come in, they kind of know, Hey, this is what it takes to be a part of the squad. And you're kind of on the bus or you're not on the bus. Um, um, maybe not as black and white as that, but, um, you know, that has at least helped a ton, um, and things that, you know, Demps and I have been around since, since the beginning have noticed that that's almost like, you know, a piece to that secret sauce, um, obviously with some other things in play, but I won't reveal all of that, but, um, but yeah, those are kind of one of the, you know, two intangibles or a couple intangibles that really take. So speaking of November 6th, Whitecaps versus Pride back-to-backs at warrior are you guys going to sweep them or what like what's <laughs> man the white caps are really good it's always so fun to play against them um yeah what's the obviously... hardest thing about playing them um they... okay well when you're three seconds left in the game and they find a way <laughs> to score or like it was in the isabel cup final where yeah. you have you know five minutes left in the game and all of a sudden they come back and you're like oh shit we just took a five minute major and um things like that happen so um what i hate about playing against them is um i hate that like literally it sounds corny and cliche down to the final buzzer but it really is with a group like that because they'll haunt you and they've haunted us before um and you know outside of obviously you know they're they're key star players they're just a team that literally never gives up and it kind of um it's a it's a team that you know you have to come to play like all 60 minutes but uh yeah i'd love to sweep them at home that would be pretty nice but it would be, it would be cool to yeah. open that way i feel like this is a very unique women's hockey rivalry that makes it so kind of electric because there's so much history um especially over the last two years so so i hope you guys do too obviously being here um <laughs> but, but they're all like they're all super nice like off the ice yeah. all the yeah. players are so, like very down to earth like very nice people and then the minute you get on the ice it's like a whole nother face comes on you're like there's no more nice minnesota in these people and you're like shit okay we're playing a real hockey game now because yeah. these people are cutthroat and they want to win and they'll kind of yeah. do whatever they need to do to win so um yeah no it's turning into you know a pretty cool rivalry well, that's the mid that's the Midwestern vibe, right? We're super nice to your face, but if you mess with us or our corn casseroles, we come yeah. for you with everything. Wait, so you said they're really nice off the ice. Are any teams not nice off the ice? I mean, I don't know. I don't, like, know. I don't yeah. know. I guess not. But like, I don't know, there's some people you don't really like, I guess. I, <laughs> I, I wanna try to know get along who... with everyone, but there's some people that you just can't help it. I don't know. Wow. They can't help themselves. So you can't help them. <laughs> I want this dirt so bad, but I'm not going to push you because we have other really exciting questions to get to. But I'm so, I'm just. Anytime. I, I, anytime in my DMs. If you anytime. Have, anytime. <laughs> like my DMs are open. I am a locked vault. Yeah. 
it's yeah, true it's, uh, I've seen a lot in my time in this league <laughs> i'm sure i was gonna say you've been there since since day one so i i've uh, sure. got some characters yeah. speaking of being there since day one you know your journey to where you are now wasn't just like pride and um, you started out on the Lego Rivs, and then you went to the Whale, and finally the Pride. And you played for the Pride before they were acquired by private ownership. So how did that transition affect the club? Did it at all? Like, what was it like compared to the other teams you'd been on? Because, um, like, we're really interested in the, in the private ownership aspect because there was so much shakeup this past offseason. Yeah, it really, for us, um, yeah, I had come in to the Pride in in year um, four. They had already played, like, uh, I think five games into the season I had come, so I missed five games. Um, and we had only won, like, four games that entire season, so we really plummeted. It was a really rough kind of go at what we had. Um, and then the following year, again, we were owned by the league, but – kind of what I just noticed was a shift in really um, kind of the professionalism as hmm. players, even approaching. Um, yes, there's obviously some things that come with individual ownership, like resources and, and obviously the funds to, to be able to give you those, those good resources um, in, in regards to like equipment, um, skating on the ice a couple more times than, you know, what you did when you weren't privately owned, but um, kind of just backtracking on that, how everyone, when we met Miles for the first time, everyone was kind of had this approach of, oh, wow, like this is a big step in kind of this isn't just a, you know, we're not just showing up once or, or twice a week to, to practice, which that kind of had been the culture really um, in the, the, cup, the two years that I was there for the Pride was, you know, half the time some people wouldn't even show up to practice. They would just come to games. Um, and it was people that we actually ended up kind of really getting rid of, which is, you know, you kind of cut like the fat of the people that really aren't committed. And then when Miles came in, he had trimmed the fat, Miles comes in and it's just like this whole different approach to it where people are like, wow, someone's investing their money in our team and they invest in the sport because they believe in the sport. And now, you know, they're going to give us these resources that we've been asking for for um you know since the infancy of the league or the beginning of the league and now it's kind of like okay we also ourselves have to take a a a step in the right direction um and kind of that's just the way it was players were kind of like okay it's not just like "Eh, i'm gonna go to the gym every once in a while it's like no i really want to invest more in myself too as a player because i know someone else is investing as well do you think like between before the cwhl folded and now there's been like a major difference in the resources that have been allocated, like just in general? 100%. You know, it's it's now to a a point where when I first started, and this is something as simple as just team apparel, okay? I'm not not even gonna get into something that actually means something. So let's just (laughs) go with something as basic as team apparel that you get when you're 10 years old, you get track suits, right? when I was playing for an end, you know, for any of the franchises that I played for prior to the individual ownership, even with the pride prior to individual ownership, like you weren't even getting like, you're getting like a team t-shirt, you know, you're a part of a professional hockey league. Um, you're calling yourself a professional player, but you're like, you don't even get like team apparel to even wear anywhere. You're getting like a t-shirt or two, you know, like the most minor things where, um, you know, and then that obviously goes to a budget now that's you know, like $10,000 worth of a pay, you know, for the entire staff. And it's not just yeah. us getting outfitted, it's the entire staff getting outfitted. So, um, you know, there's something as simple as that, that is important as a player. Like you want, you know, not just to be wearing, you know, workout gear that says pride stuff, or when you travel, you know, you have the, the pro- proper things, but you know, now it's like we have everything down to like stupid skate guards that say Boston Pride on him yeah. with a number. And it's like, you know, it's dinky little things that from day one should be a no brainer, but they're not because they don't have who wants to allocate, you know, thousands of dollars to that when they're more important with, you know, paying for practice ice time for the two times a week that we do in practice. In. Yeah, I think it's it's also cool because you all kind of started. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say you started it, but you know, people invested in you and you went on to destroy the league 
for like two seasons, right? Like you guys, you guys proved your return of investment. You're like, oh, you want to invest in us? We're gonna go almost undefeated for a season, and we're gonna take home the Isabel Cup. Um, and I don't think it's you know coincidence that your owners went on and bought two more teams after that. So you know you're now owned by the same group that owns the Rivs and Toronto Six. So do you think that's gonna affect you all? at all in any way like is it going to be like okay well if the ribs are getting this then this is going to get you know do you think there's going to be some equality issues <laughs> we always it's always funny because like when you see miles you're like so like we're we're more important <laughs> <laughs> like, you're gonna make sure you take care of come us on, miles. Like, come on miles give me those stupid state cards come on let's uh, go <laughs> um no i don't i don't think so um i think because uh because Joanna and um, her husband, kind of everyone is across the board within that ownership mm. group. Um, that I don't, I don't think that's that's going to be an issue. I think what's so great about that is that all the resources that we are getting and that we've had for the past two um, seasons or whatever you want to call this past year was, um, you know, like they're going to start to get as well. Which like then you're just going to start to see. Kind of across the board like there's no discrepancy between the two because you know there's quite i'm on the, the pa calls um as, as a board member and it's it's tough when this past year you're you're on a pa call and you're hearing that you know you guys are taken care of and you know toronto for lack of better terms are taken care of and then you have you know the other teams that aren't taken care of and they're they're still asking for the same things that we were asking for in like year two year three and you're like okay well how are we going to continue to to grow in the right direction if i'm sitting here pretty i have no complaints right now i don't have anything to bring to the table table but i can sympathize with those players that are asking for things that i was asking for in in year two and year three so um i think just across the board it's really going to elevate kind of everything and i think the on ice play is going to be quite different um for the better this year can't wait can't wait well yeah. we only have two more questions for you eleni do you want okay, to do the first going, one? Are we going into the food questions? Oh, we have to. I mean. Okay. All right. Okay. This is, I just want to remind you that if you say anything that you don't like and you don't want it, we yeah. can cut it. This is we'll a cut very it. controversial, difficult question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to know, do you prefer waffles or pancakes? And I would like some reasoning when you have decided your answer. Oh. Don't mess this one up. Well, I've always really, I, I, I'm trying to think of my reasoning now. Um, I've always been a pancake girl. Interesting, okay. Always a pancake girl. Always, okay. Always. Um, I do like waffles though. <laughs> but <laughs> I started liking waffles, I think later in life. Okay. Because I discovered like how easy it was to make like Eggo waffles and those types of things. Pancakes, though, I always had when I was younger because I liked Aunt Jemima batter and I always wanted to be adult-like and was like, ooh, let me make pancakes. And I think, like, my dad's not the best cook. And so the only thing that he really could make was, like, pasta and, like, pancakes. And so that was a food that I learned when I was younger how to make. Um, mainly because I just like eating, like, Aunt Jemima batter, but, like... Just no uh, mixture, just out of the box out of the box yeah, yeah, yeah um but yeah i don't really have any reasoning outside of that um and i loved yeah just aunt jemima buttermilk pancakes those are amazing blueberry or chocolate chip if you're picking chocolate chip Ooh. okay but i never really like i was like a total like let's just go just plain yeah aunt jemima, yeah like plain, plain a, a whopping of butter a lot of butter ton of syrup and you know what actually now that i think about it where this all started is i had dollar pancakes from mcdonald's as a kid coming from like hockey practice oh yeah and my dad's like let's go let's. to mcdonald's because it's 6 a.m you know practice and i'm not making food for you so this is where we'll go clearly 90s born kid yeah, yeah. that's what your parents did and yeah. i think that's probably actually where my love of pancakes started but yeah all right um, all right, on to less controversial topics. So the name of this show is Locker Room Talk, um, and it's that for a reason. I think that it's really important to reclaim 
words and phrases and things that have been taken over in the past couple years like my wife started listening to country music again she's very excited about it i'm not but you know to each their own so what does locker room talk mean to you when you hear that phrase it's okay if it's not inspirational i mean i i don't know if it's really like inspirational for me but um i think i don't know locker talk locker talk definitely has like or at least associated maybe more so on the men's side of the game Mm -hmm. has had like a certain connotation to it um or stigma that comes with it um or a baggage that comes with it and i think um in a negative way and i think it's so interesting because um in the amount of locker rooms that i've been and and certainly in the nwhl like there's that's like the most exciting part about still playing and the environment that like really a lot of us always talk about. Like I was actually just talking to a player that um, retired um, a year back. And she's like, the thing I miss the most about playing is just being in the locker room with the girls and just thinking about all the funny stories and the shit that's happened and players that you've had on your team that like are no longer a part of the team or the league, or they, you know, just things that like come and go. And there's, I guess so many memories that come with that, but in such like a positive way, it's never, at least in, in my time, um, been these, um, kind of negative connotations around it, but, um, there's definitely this past year, I think the locker room has also changed for the better in regards to just some of the conversations we've had that we've never, ever had before. So like for me, the locker room's like, it's a sacred place. Like it really is. And now we're bringing in probably more conversations, um, especially this past year than we've ever had before, but in a good way, in a way where people are like, is this is, this is interesting. Like we've actually never talked about this type of stuff in the locker room because you want it to be fun and light. And, you know, sometimes it gets stressful within a hockey game, but um, the locker room has been a place that I think has is going to continue to change things for the better of the sport. Um, and I'm not just saying on the men's side of the game, there's only negative conversation that happens because it's not true on the women's side. There is the same. It's the sport that still has a lot to change, especially in a, a sport like ours that is, you know, a primarily privileged white sport. Um, you know, it really is. And um, but anyways, I'm going on a million tangents here. But what I'm saying is that, you know, I think um in my experience, again, it's not an inspirational thing for me per se, but um, it's been, the locker room has been a special place. And um, I think it's continuing to, to change for the sport, um, but in a, uh, in a good way. And I hope it's really changing the sport for the better. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Eleni, do you have any final closing thoughts? do right no um no i don't think so like i'm still getting over I, I the chocolate chips the first episode where we don't say go butte to the end of the call so thank you for oh giving me that God. because how are you I about to be- rat on us like that like you didn't Freddie did not need to know that i think it's we just come on a butte podcast without even knowing she opened her heart to us okay she opened her heart to us and you threw that back at her i'm just saying i feel represented tonight and I, I appreciate it. Go Pride. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait either. November 6th, opening weekend. Friday's going to get two goals. I'm calling it right now. One on the power play, one at even strength. All right. All right. Well, well, Freddie, <laughs> Freddie, <laughs> thank you. Like, I don't know. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Um, do you have any final parting words before we go? Or is it just go Pride? <laughs> go Pride. <laughs> All right, you are wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Kaylee Fracken, um, you know where to find her. I mean, on the All Star Board or Defender of the Year Board or any you know High Score Board anywhere. So, Freddie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us on this week's locker room talk. I hope that you enjoyed our talk with Kaylee Fracken. Pancake AKA- girl. Pancake girl. Pancake girl. Ah. Where's the merch? Am I right? Um, and talking about private ownership and, and what's still to come. Speaking of still to come, you don't want to miss any of our episodes. Please like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date. We've still got four episodes left in this season and we're not going to stop there. So. Yeah. Well, no we're, we might stop for a little while, but 
then yeah, restart. Well, like, take a break, but not like stop. Right, right, not like stop, stop, but re you know, yeah, because you know the, the, the season's not starting until November sixth. We gonna do? We right. gonna do? We're gonna cry. We're gonna cry. At least we can get through Halloween. You know, now I can now I can spend my full energy and effort on Halloween this year. I don't have to worry about watching hockey. You know. Yeah, God forbid, it's right? Been terrible. Okay. Anyways. Um, so anyway, anyways. Thanks for watching the show this week. Uh, let us know. We want to know your pancake waffle uh, preferences. It's waffles. Would you like a dissertation. The answer is waffles. The answer is waffles. And anyone who disagrees, I disagree with you respectfully. Because I really respect you, some of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. Let's. You'll have to. You'll have to. Yep. Anyways, this has been Locker Room Talk. We will forever ramble and be weird. Thank you for joining us. Like and subscribe. Peace.